An infinitely long cylindrical conductor has a radius of 30 centimeters and a surface charge density of 15 microcoulombs per square meter. What is the total charge enclosed by a Gaussian cylinder of radius 1.5 meters and length 2 meters? So let's begin by drawing a picture. So what we're going to have is a cylindrical conductor. And then outside of that, we're going to have a, a larger cylinder. This is going to be the Gaussian cylinder. Now there's a positive charge uniformly distributed throughout the cylindrical conductor. And that positive charge rests on the surface of that conductor. Keep in mind, for a metal conductor on the inside, the electric field is zero because all of the charge is spread on the, the surface of the conductor. Positive charges repel each other, so they're going to maximize the distance between them. Now, let's define big R as the radius of the cylinder and little r as the radius of the Gaussian cylinder. The electric field is going to emanate away from the positive charge. So it's perpendicular to the lateral area of the Gaussian cylinder. The length of the Gaussian cylinder is L. The cylindrical conductor is infinitely long. It keeps on going, so we can't put a value to it. So L only applies for the length of the Gaussian cylinder. But now let's focus on part A. What is the total charge enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder? We know that the surface charge density, sigma, is equal to the charge divided by the area. And so the charge, Q, is equal to sigma times A. Now this area is not the area of the circle on top. It's the lateral area. If you recall, the surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. 2 pi r squared is the area of the top circle and the bottom circle of the cylinder. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So for two circles, it's 2 pi r squared. The lateral area is 2 pi r h. This is what we need to use. We need to use the lateral area of the cylinder. So this is going to be q is equal to uh, sigma times a, the lateral area, which is 2 pi. And we need to use the radius of the cylindrical conductor because the charge rests on that conductor. And then times the length of the conductor, or the length of the Gaussian uh, cylinder, because the conductor goes on forever. So this is q. So now let's go ahead and calculate it. So the total charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface is going to be 2 pi times the radius of the cylindrical conductor, which is uh, 30 centimeters, and that is the same as 0.3 meters, times the length of the Gaussian surface, which is 2 meters in length. And let's not forget the surface charge density. So that's uh, 15 microcoulombs, which is 15 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs per square meter. So this is equal to 5.65 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs. The unit meters cancel. So this is the total charge enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder. Now what about part B? What is the electric flux that passes through the Gaussian cylinder? How can we find that? Well, we can use Gauss's law to figure that out. Gauss's law states that the electric flux that passes through a Gaussian surface is equal to the total charge enclosed by that surface 
divided by epsilon sub naught. So it's just going to be Q, which is 5.65 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs, divided by 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And so you should get 6.38 times 10 to the positive 6. And the units are newtons times square meters per coulomb. Electric flux is basically electric field times area. The units for electric field is newtons per coulomb, and area is square meters. So you just got to put those two together. And so that's the electric flux that passes through uh, this Gaussian surface. Now what about part C? What is the electric field 1.5 meters away from the cylindrical conductor? Well, let's begin by deriving the equation. So according to Gauss's law, we know that the electric flux is equal to the total charge divided by epsilon sub naught. And we know that the total charge is basically the surface charge density, sigma, times the lateral area, which is 2 pi, times r, the radius of the cylindrical conductor times the length of the Gaussian cylinder. And the electric flux is the product of the electric field times the area. And this is the area of the Gaussian cylinder because the electric field passes through the Gaussian cylinder. So let's go ahead and replace Q with uh, sigma times 2 pi r times L divided by epsilon. Now the area of the Gaussian cylinder is very similar to the area of the cylindrical conductor with one difference. The length is still the same, but the radius is different. So the area of the Gaussian cylinder is 2 pi times lowercase r times the same length L. And that's equal to uh, sigma 2 pi r times L divided by epsilon. So we can cancel L and we can cancel 2 pi. So all we got to do is take this R, move it to the bottom of that equation. So we could divide both sides by R. So now we have this expression. The electric field is therefore equal to the surface charge density times the radius of the cylindrical conductor divided by epsilon sub naught times the radius of the Gaussian surface. So keep in mind, little r is larger than big r based on the way we have defined everything in this particular problem. So if you want to calculate the electric field outside of the cylindrical conductor, this is the equation that you need. If little r is less than big R, if you want to calculate the electric field inside the cylindrical conductor, it's going to be equal to zero. The electric field inside any metal conductor is always zero, but outside of it, it has a value. Now let's go ahead and plug everything in. So sigma is uh, 15 times 10 to the minus 6. The radius of the cylindrical conductor is 0.3 meters, or 30 centimeters. Epsilon sub naught, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And the radius of the Gaussian cylinder is uh, 1.5 meters. So if I typed in everything correctly, what I have is this, 338,983 newtons per coulomb. So let me just type it in one more time to make sure I didn't miss anything. Mistakes do happen. And yes, so this is the answer. Now what about part D? 
what is the linear charge density of the cylindrical conductor? How can we figure that? So first, let's clear away a few things. So first, we know that lambda is equal to Q divided by L. It's the charge divided by the length. In this case, L is basically, we're going to use L, the length of the Gaussian cylinder. And earlier in this video, we said that Q is basically equal to the surface charge density times 2 pi times the radius of the cylindrical conductor times L. So therefore, we can cancel out. So we can get an expression of lambda in terms of sigma. So lambda is sigma times 2 pi r. So it's basically the linear charge density is equal to the surface charge density of the cylindrical conductor times the circumference of that conductor. So it's going to be uh, 15 times 10 to the minus 6 times 2 pi times the radius of 0.3 meters. So the linear charge density is about 2.83 times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs per meter. Now the last thing we're going to do is calculate or derive the formula for the electric field in terms of lambda. So we said that the electric field is equal to the surface charge density times the radius of the cylindrical conductor divided by epsilon sub naught and times the radius of the Gaussian cylinder. Now we said that lambda is 2 pi r times the surface charge density. So if we solve for the surface charge density, the surface charge density is equal to the linear charge density divided by the circumference. So what we're going to do is replace the surface charge density with this expression. So the electric field is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi r times r divided by epsilon times the radius of the Gaussian surface. So we can cancel these two. So therefore we get this familiar equation E is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times r. You've seen that equation a couple times. So that's how you can calculate the electric field of a cylindrical conductor if you're given the linear charge density. It's basically the same as the electric field for a line of charge. When you're very far away from the cylindrical conductor, you can treat it as if it's a line of charge.